Hi, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. I've just received the Boss GX100, and what I thought I'd do in this video is to see how well it compares in a recording against real amplifiers. Before we do anything else, let's have a quick listen to the track we're gonna be working with, and then I'm gonna solo the guitar that we're gonna be replacing and trying to beat, or at least trying to compete with. going to be starting from a completely blank patch on the GX100. The way that we access all the different elements, the amps and the effects inside the GX100 is by pushing the effects button. One of the great things about the GX100 is that we're not restricted to where each of these effects in the blocks can go. So literally you can have an effect anywhere or an amp anywhere in the signal chain. When I was recording the recorded version of this guitar, the first thing that I went into from my guitar was a compressor. So let's load a compressor into the first slot. So I'm gonna click on effects palettes and I'm gonna drag this compressor into that first slot. Next in the chain was an amplifier. So let's drag in an amp into slot two. Right, then I want some delay. So let's just scroll across to we come to our delays. Now we've got a couple of different choices here, but I'm gonna use this delay plus as we can choose lots of different delay types like mono, stereo, pan delays from using this particular effect. And lastly for the moment, I might add some more effects in a minute, but I need to add a reverb. So I'm gonna drag in this reverb plus into effect slot four. Now it's a really simple signal chain, but let's just mute the compressor at the moment. The way that we mute is by just tapping on the screen over that particular effect. Just by loading the effects in, it sounds like this. Let's get the amp tone sorted first. Now the way that I can access all the different parameters of the amps is just by touching the amp slot. And what I can do is to actually use the touch screen to change the parameters. But there's a way that you can deep dive. If I click up here and I click knob view, right now we're gonna see a bunch of parameters on the screen that we can change much quicker. But I'm just gonna come out of there and I'm gonna turn off the delay and the reverb at the moment, let's go back. We can choose all of our different amp choices here just by scrolling through. Again, we can use a touch screen just by scrolling up and down on the touch screen. But I'm gonna keep it on the natural settings. That was my favorite cleanish sort of amp that was in the GT1000. I think we need a bit more gain. Let's crank that up a bit. Already that's really close to the sort of amp tone that I was getting from the matchless amp. I think we need a little bit less bass, so I'm gonna click on the bass and then use the first rotary wheel. And I'm gonna dial that back just a bit. Let's turn the treble up just a bit. And let's give it a bit more clarity with the, uh, with the presence, just turn that up. So there I've got a guitar tone. I've shaved off all the bass and that's gonna help the guitar fit in the mix a lot better as so we're not gonna be interfering with the bass frequencies. If I scroll across all these different pages, you'll see we've got all these different choices and we can change all the different mic types. 
But let's keep it on the 57 setting as I use the 57 on the cab on my matchless. As a raw guitar sound, I think that's gonna fit pretty well in the track. Let's come out of there and let's go back to the compressor. So again, I'm gonna click over the compressor to turn it on. Let's go back into the knob view. This tends to happen a lot with these sort of software based compressors. They're a little bit over the top. They're a little bit too much. So what I'd like to do with this is to use some of the parallel mixing functions inside the GX100 by turning up the direct mix. Now what that's doing is it's blending the compressed signal with the clean guitar signal. So let's deal with that first. Turn it right up, say to about 55. There's a bit too much compression. So let's bring the sustain back. Now that's really nice because it's driving the front of the amp. Because I've added a compressor and we're using a single coil guitar, you'll hear that we've got some added noise. So let's bring a noise suppressor in just to control all of that excess noise. And I'm gonna drag that straight after the amp. All I want to do with the noise suppressor is just to turn the threshold up until we get rid of that noise. Around about 43, that's cut all that noise out. Let's have a look at the reverb. So if I turn that on, when I was mixing the track, I used a plate setting. So let's turn on the plate setting. I don't need the reverb to be so long, so let's turn that back. I want the guitar to be quite ambient, so I'm going to turn the effects level up. As before, where I didn't want the guitar to interfere with the bass frequencies, with this, I don't want the guitar to interfere with some of the vocal effects, and the vocal effects on this particular track are quite bright, so I'd like to turn back the high cut on this EQ. Now, full stop, that is a great sounding reverb. Really happy with that. Let's exit that screen and let's tweak the delays. So at the moment, we've got a mono delay. Let's change that type to, to pan delay as what I want the delay to do is to bounce from speaker to speaker. 400 milliseconds is absolutely fine. I'm gonna bring the feedback back just a little bit and let's bring the effect all the way back because I barely want to hear the delay. I just want to use it as a, just to create a bit of movement in the, um, in the guitar. Now again, the delay is far too bright. Let's bring the, uh, the high cut back. And let's just give it a little bit of modulation. For a clean guitar sound, that is exactly the sort of sound that I'll go for. Now I'm going to record the guitar part to the song and then we can compare it against the original guitar part recorded with that matchless over there. Good night. 
one thing that I will say is the actual reaction between the guitar and the processor is absolutely brilliant. It's nothing like you get with a lot of processors where you can sort of feel that you're not really connected. You're not, there's a bit of latency between where you're hitting the strings and where the processor is doing the work. With this AIRD technology, you don't get that at all and it feels immediate and it feels like you're playing through an amp. But let's have a listen to see how they compare. Bearing in mind that I haven't added any EQ to the GX100, that is just what's coming out of the GX100 and the match list has been EQ'd inside the track. So it just shows you how well the GX100 fits inside the track. I think it sounds absolutely brilliant. What a fantastic unit. I'm gonna be making some more videos using the GX100. So if you wanna see more videos on the Bosch GX100, don't forget to like and subscribe. Click on the bell button and you'll be notified of any future video that comes out from the Studio Rats. I'm Paul and I'll see you next time. Cheers.